This is called the Dive's Tooth Thug, and it's one of the newest lures from Rapala. And I'm going to hold the box up for you so you can see the packaging right here. Now this particular one has a bright yellow or green colored side, I call it chartreuse, with a brown back. Now what's so unique about this particular crankbait isn't just the size, but also the angle of the slip. I'm going to hold up in my right hand here the standard dives to Rapala. You can see it here. Now notice the way the lip comes straight out from that lure. So it's parallel, literally, to like the eyes or the head of the lure. But if you look at the thug, which is right here, if I hold the lures in the same direction, horizontal, see how that lip is angled down? That does a couple of things. One, it gives the lure a much wider side-to-side -side wobble like this. And also, because it's got such an angle, it can't go down that far. So it runs at about this particular angle to the bottom. Where the Dive 2 Flat Series, which was this one here, the lure has a little bit tighter action and it dives down a little bit deeper. Now let me show you the other difference. I'm going to angle these so that you can see their profile. You see that this is the Dives to Flat series, it's very flat. And the Dives to Thug is more of a cylindrical shape. So because of that, it's actually quite buoyant for its size and it's ideal to use when you're fishing for bass that are suspended in deeper water off the weed beds but shallower up. Okay, so the dive's too flat, which is this one here, will dive down to about 10 feet. This particular one will dive down to about 7, 8 feet, but you can control the buoyancy. Even though they're both suspending lures, this one will rise a little bit quicker. So they're ideal lures to use when you're fishing for bass off of weed lines. Okay, you ready to grab this guy? I'm going to lift him up. You got it. Careful. Got it. Now, you know what's interesting? I mentioned with the first bass that we hooked, that it was hooked with the front hook. Right. So this guy went for it. He's got one hook, poor guy pinned, just in the back, and he's got the front hook in his mouth again. And look at which one. Look they at call, that. They call that the sure set. Hook. Oh, neat. So we've got these on both our crankbaits. So one of the trebles is a little bit longer. So that's interesting. I don't know if you would have been hooked if it was the same size as the other right. hooks, you know? So that's it worked. Neat. So it gets maybe two and a half. He's a little chunkier. Nice that's fish. Chunky nice fish. chunky fish. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep some bigger ones in the live wolf for photo. Okay, We're going to sure. let that guy go. Absolutely. So Al, from you dealing with, uh, I'm sure, a lot of fishermen and especially marina people, what are some of the things that fishermen really look for when it comes to a boat? I know what I look for in a boat versatility and all stuff yeah. like that but from you talking to fishermen what are they looking for because I know you do a lot of the sports shows I, yes. I often bump into you you know it's it's I think people are looking for the same thing they're looking for in any big purchase that they want something that's got some quality to it you know I think there's a lot of uh, people that are frustrated with some of the products that are out there you know they're, they're looking for something better mm -hmm. they're looking for something unique um, when we were developing some of our new models for 010 um, we uh, we did a lot of testing to some of the products that are out there. And one thing that kept coming up over and over again, is a really comfortable riding boat. And I think, like you said, the, there's a lot of baby boomers that are looking to get, you know, something nice. They want a really nice boat. They want something that they can enjoy. And they don't have to, to, to pound the heck out of them. You know, it, it's and very, you know, very most nice. of our waters, like we're down here in the Bay of Quinney, and even though it's fairly protected, it can really get oh, rough. Yeah. Or if you're out on Lake Ontario right. or Lake Erie. So, you know, unlike a lot of the smaller reservoirs and river systems in the States, right. we've got like oceans. I mean, yeah. when you're on Lake Ontario, it's like being out on the ocean. It's true. So you want a safe, comfortable boat. Well, look at look at today. Stuff. We've got all the white caps happening out here. It's no problem. It's well, no problem caps. at all. Yeah. Well, this is fine. <laughs> you, you can have a coffee. No problem. No. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get back on the weed line. You got it. Fisher guys! Ladies and je I mean ladies and ladies, what I'm about to show you is to demonstrate a pickerel rig. That's what this is called, okay? And it's a rig that you would use when you want to fish close to bottom without getting stuck with your hooks. So what I've got here is a liter of line, and you buy these by the way. I saw the price on the package, this was 77 cents Canadian, okay? Relatively inexpensive. You buy the actual rig, you have to buy a little sinker. This is a bell sinker. There's a little snap there, so you can change the size of your sinker. That goes on the bottom. And at the other end, if you will, right at the top here, this pickerel rig comes equipped with a swivel. 
A swivel enables you to tie a knot there to your main line, and it also swivels so if the minnow's swimming around or this thing spins around, it doesn't twist your line. So the unique thing about a pickerel rig is that when they make them, they build in these wire arms and they supply these hooks that are on leaders. So it's very easy to put the hooks on there. The wire arm keeps the hooks away from the main line. So if you've got a minnow on here, or a worm, or one on one and one on the other, they can swim around the line, and because of the swivel, they won't tangle the line. So you cast this out. It works especially well when you're fishing out of a boat or a bridge or a pier, where you just drop your line down. And this hits the bottom, and you know that your hooks are just off the bottom. And you tighten your line, so that the hooks don't lay down on the bottom, and you wait, and when you get a hit, you know that a fish has got the bait and you set the hook. Okay, so pickerel rigs are excellent for fishing for perch and other panfish, or really any of the game fish when you want to fish close to the bottom, but you don't want to get stuck on bottom with the hooks. Excellent rig.